Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hello and welcome to All About Android. This is episode 345, recorded on Tuesday, November 28th, 2017, where your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Owl. I'm Ron Richards. Yeah, there we go. Lawrence Ion. <laughs> I heard like three switches and we got there eventually. <laughs> Victor is behind the board pushing buttons. I also, you know, we're at the top of the show, so I'll just throw a quick uh, shout out to Alex, who was in here helping out prior to the show. And then for like the 10 minutes of pre-show, pacing back and forth until we actually decided to start. So thank you for being patient, <laughs> Alex. While we did our pre-show. <laughs> uh, sorry I talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you. Hey, some some people consider the pre-show to be the best part. I, some people. Some people do. <laughs> some, people. some people think a lot of things. True. <laughs> How y'all doing? Doing all right. Getting in the holiday spirit. Are you? I don't got, see a Santa got, hat on you. I got well, I don't think I own a Santa hat, but I got oh. you can't see them because they're not in the shot, but over here are both our Christmas trees and they're both set up to the Google home so I can turn nice. them on and off. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty much all set. Yeah. So. I, rem I remember about this time last year, uh, you yep. may recall Ron was very excited about the fact that he could throw out a voice command and turn the Christmas tree lights on outside. <laughs> which points out, yes, which is amazing. And still, uh, as, as, as if it's like, it's, it's like, it's like new every time it happens, but that makes me realize that we are now one year into living with Google home in our lives. Yeah. Has it enriched yeah. our lives? What do you think, Flo? I have more than one. I have okay. three of them in my house right now. In addition to about like four different echoes and a Cortana smart speaker. So I have a, I've got a lot of strays here. I've become a crazy smart speaker lady. Somehow, <laughs> yes. you're just collecting nice. smart speakers. You're gonna feed them, and you gotta you know, they're, they're surround I mean, you on the couch. Uh, John, I just want you to know, by the way, that I bragged about you last holiday season and what you were able to accomplish with the Samsung Smart Things. But this yep. year, I'm gonna try the TP Link outlets, which uses right. the Casa app, and see how that works because they were on sale and I bought them. And I just mentioned tonight to my husband, oh yeah, save that for Sunday when we put up our tree, which is what we're doing this there weekend. So <laughs> I have to admit that setup this year was much easier. All I had to do was plug the lights into the outlets and then go into the smart things app and rename them. So instead of living room light, it's inside tree light and outside lights is now outside Christmas tree. But uh, yeah, so very easy. It was wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Mars room and, and Mars worm in chat says show title crazy smart things lady. Uh, so that's, that's a working title at least for right now. We could build upon that throughout this show. Um, this is definitely one of those weeks where it was like I sat down to compile news and I think I put it out on Twitter yesterday, slow Android news week, but you know what, as we always do, we figured it out. We filled, we, we've hand picked the freshest Android stories for you this holiday season. We're going to be discussing Project Treble's effects on ROM development, uh, what to, wa what to wa watch for with Android 8.1, because we've got the final update happening there. OnePlus 5T review, both Flo and I have been playing around with it. Ron, you have one on the way. Kind of bummed Ooh. that you won't be in on this uh, 5T well. party quite yet. I'll, I'll, I'll chime in with my thoughts later on. All right. All right. We'll get a follow up with you. Uh, the Moto Mod Alexa speaker, you've actually been have been spending some time with that, Ron. And uh, you'll give us your thoughts on that. And then we have, of course, a ton of your feedback to kind of um, it's like the stuffing from this thing, from this turkey dinner. As long as it's from the box, Jason. I don't want any of this stuff with barley and whatever other thing that you put in there. Couscous. It has to be from the box. Oh, man. I hope no one makes stuffing with couscous. Um, all right. I, I think we've given you ample uh, ammo with which to jump to the news, Victor. <laughs> you might call them crazy news people. So here's Android news. <laughs> you, 
get it. You might. Could you? Could you? Could you? Anyways, hear, could you hear the um, the switch switch yes. off from what I originally was planning? Well, because I've got I've got the inside scoop. I heard you, but not through my ear. I heard you all the way across the room. So it's like I got a teaser of what you were about to deliver. Uh, good work, Victor. All right, Flo, you got the first one. Well, the first one is exciting for those of us who like software updates, which if you're an Android user is everybody because it's a thing. It's like the tooth fairy. It only comes when you lose your teeth, apparently. Uh, Android 8.1 is one step closer to release with a final preview and a blog post penned by Dave Burke. Uh, oh, yeah, I, a friend well, of the show. Now friend of the show. Friend of the show. Yeah. Uh, nice to announce uh, what it is that 8.1 includes. Uh, it includes neural networks APIs for the on-device machine learning frameworks uh, and with TensorFlow Lite available to developers. It sounds like this is a part of the puzzle that is going to make things very interesting going forward. Uh, the Pixel 2 also got that Pixel Visual Core finally activated, uh, which will give it a boost to th the third-party apps that are using the Android camera API. Uh, so that means you'll be able to use that wonderful HDR plus capability uh, in other apps, which is really going to come in handy. Um, and of course, this is also just going to improve the quality of image processing throughout. I, for one, am excited about the Pixel Visual Core because of the things that I have enjoyed using the Pixel 2 for, it is Google Photos, everything that comes with Google Photos, and the package that is just enhanced by this camera, which, as we'll talk about later, is still been the one that has impressed me the most this year. Yeah, I would agree. And uh, before the show started, Virgil, uh, well, do you have breaking news? This is so not breaking news, but we might as well. I mean, it's might the holiday well. season. <laughs> We're having fun this month. Let's do it. It's only breaking in the sense that it, I didn't include this article in the doc. <laughs> uh, but Virgil put it in the in the the chat room, and and so I, I included it because of him. So breaking news: Virgil gave us a link to uh, how you activate Pixel Visual Core's uh, features on Android 8.1, and it's basically you'll you'll find these features in the developer developer options menu. That's kind of the hidden menu that most of you probably already know by now uh, that you can get to in your settings. And uh, once you go there, you'll be able to find. Uh, let's see here in the debugging subheading, you'll find, uh, something called L camera, how HDR plus you toggle that on and that will, uh, give you the, the benefits of the pixel visual core, well, which I feel like it's still kind of early to know exactly what those benefits are uh, outside of sharing that, uh, that HDR plus capability for third party apps. We've also heard, you know, this is going to enhance the quality of your photos that are taken. I'd love to see some before and after, um, pictures of that to, to kind of see what that means in a tangible sense. Can we just appreciate the Christmas header on that nine to five Google article? I really appreciate to see that those of us <laughs> have gotten into the Christmas spirit. Uh, you know, we've got Ron, we've got nine to five Google. I just thank you, everyone. Everybody's <laughs> getting all, getting all side. Christmassy. I know. It's like Thanksgiving's anyway. out of the way, and, and now all we take pictures of with our phones are our Christmas trees. Trees and menorahs. Yeah. They're the new thing in the room, so we might as well take pictures of them. Precisely. Very true. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Is there anything else from 8.1? A Bluetooth indicator. Uh, let's see here. A for Bluetooth accessories. indicator. So Bluetooth, yeah, indicator for battery, for accessories. That sort of stuff is going to pass through a little bit more. Um, of course, the color uh, display differences for the Pixel 2 because people were complaining that it wasn't saturated, and now with 8.1, mm -hmm. you'll get you'll get that saturated option uh, and other things, which I think we'll talk about. Actually, Ron, yeah, tell us tell us a little bit about uh, how AI on the device can actually be useful. Well, yeah. Well, are you talking about our next story here? Yes. I assume. Yeah, uh, yeah. If was, so, if so, as someone who has been commuting on the New York City subway system, um, I was very glad to see this because I see this activity happening all the time, and it's really not cool. But uh, Google researchers showed off the new gaze protection protection functionality at the Neural Information Processing Systems Conference next week. That's when they're going to show it off. And basically what it will do is it will use the Pixel phone's front-facing camera to detect when a second person is looking at your screen. 
And when it does, it will switch to camera video showing that person looking and then turn off content in the app temporarily. And they claim it works in two milliseconds. And uh, it, it runs on the phone thanks to TensorFlow <laughs> Lite. And I got to tell you, every morning, every night, I see people. I'm in the cram subway, and and people are texting. And there's some person standing net behind them reading their text, and it's kind of rude. And so I like that this can exist in a way to call people out for looking at what they shouldn't be looking at. Ron, <laughs> I have ammo for you towards me because, you know, as a curious journalist who also takes public transportation in a metropolitan area, you know, it's a long train ride for me. And sometimes, you know, there's people with interesting cases on board, you know, and I just maybe I, I'm i just curious. Maybe I'm just curious what's <laughs> happening on that screen. So this was clearly built for me. <laughs> It is very I'm sorry tempting. To everyone, I will. I will admit it is very tempting. There have been there have been times when uh, I, I believe. Oh, geez, this is years ago. I was at a baseball game and someone had a BlackBerry in the seat in front of me, and they were not watching the baseball game. Rather, they were having a very heated conversation about their plans for after the game with a certain someone. Uh, and it was it's hard. And the font was very big. It was hard not to look. It was hard to look <laughs> away. But um, uh, but yeah, no. I mean, this is this is something that happens in you know in, in crowded spaces, especially public transit. Um, but it's the application of this is very neat in that they can have. So what this means is that the camera is going to be on to yeah. be detecting when there's that second face happening. So yeah. think about that. You know, but in this case, it's being used for the forces of good and hopefully not for putting um, throw up rainbow stuff uh, on other people, as the but example that's is funny, here. But, though. Imagine yeah. if it like flashed and it was like some person behind you rainbows. Yeah. It takes a picture of them and then freezes it on the screen. So, uh, yeah. so you know exactly who it is. And wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's, 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 it's, it's neat. It's definitely neat. Yeah, it's you cool. Know, I, I think it's a good, good, uh, representation of what we're entering into right now as as uh, machine learning and this neural network processing moves onto the device thanks to things like TensorFlow Lite, which is, you know, I mean, obviously the last couple of years, AI has been a really big effort on in the in the hands of all technology companies, but especially Google. They admitted at I.O. that that's like their, their big key core focus right now. Move that onto the device and you actually you know, realize I'm sure over time, and we haven't even really thought about how, how that can be really powerful and really useful. We're going to, it's going to change certain things about how, you know, the capabilities of our phone. I feel like for, for so long, we've been really used to what our phones can do and this whole neural processing happening on the chip, on the device without having to send up to the cloud to do the processing with supercomputers and all that kind of stuff really opens the, the door for a lot of interesting use cases that we don't know yet. Again, yeah. we're talking about machines having the same neural processes as our own brains or to that effect. Are you are it's, you worried? Are you afraid? It's just it's it's <laughs> no, it, I'm not actually. I'm actually really fascinated by how this is all being recreated and yeah. how much this machine has actually learned in what the last like five years that I've been using it. I mean, that's that's pretty it's like a child. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it really is when you think about it, just, I don't know, it's crazy and cool. And I, I see what the future, I see the future. <laughs> <laughs> I see future people. I yeah, see future people. Yeah, yeah. It would be actually really cool to take today's smartphone technology and go back even five years, like five years is a good example. It doesn't seem like that far away, but Five years in the development of smartphones, especially in the development development of Android, like, wow, we've come a long way as far as what our phones are even capable of doing. And not only capable of doing, but capable of doing really fast, like usably fast. Uh, it'd be cool to show this to us ourselves five years ago and uh, see if it seemed like the future because, we, you know, we've kind of eased into it over the last couple of years. But anyways, cool stuff coming there. Uh, also very interesting here, XDA has an article about Project Treble because we're starting to kind of, you know, more devices are supporting Project Treble. They're announcing Essential is one of them. OnePlus uh, is not. And I really wish we would have asked Kyle Kang on last week's episode about that because it was in our notes to do so uh, about why the 5 and the 5T 
A, you know, why doesn't the 5T have Oreo at launch? And B, once they get upgraded to Oreo, why are they not getting trebleized? Because that much we know uh, based on what uh, OnePlus has said in the news. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. Project Treble is apparently making ROM developers excited. XDA says Treble uh, actually makes porting AOSP ROMs to multiple devices super easy. It takes. It used to take weeks or months to do this because every device was so completely different bottom to top. And now because of what Treble does to kind of um, equalize things and pull certain things out so that you've got a more focused core of code uh, that isn't so dependent on the unique sets of hardware underneath uh, to, <laughs> to paint that description with a broad brush, um, it takes days. So it really cuts down the, uh, the level of attention and modification that's needed to port a ROM uh, to a new device, they actually were able to use a s the same image as an example on the Huawei Mate 9, the Honor 8, the Honor 9, the Sony Xperia XZ1, and the Essential Phone. And it took day, you know, just uh, I think they said like 18 or 20 hours to do it. Uh, whereas before, because all those devices are so different and different manufacturers. Uh, that would be way more complicated. So that's an, that's an, yet another upside of what Treble has in store once all devices are running it. Treble. It's, it's, it's neat Treble. to see. It's neat to see the, the the moving forward of the operating. You know what I mean? Like how this stuff is able to happen now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I feel yeah. I feel like I feel like they've built. You know, it's kind of like you, we built the foundation. We built the walls. You know, they put the pretty, you know, they painted the outside or whatever. And now we get to do cool stuff like build secret rooms in the house and, you know, and like do stuff like Project Treble. Like I, it's really neat to see where it's going to go from here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, it, well, uh, and the and the kind of applications of of this and, you know, that uh, like like I, I had never really considered the the ROM community and, and well, probably partially because I'm not a ROM developer. I don't know what it actually takes and how much hard work it must be to create a ROM for a device and make sure that all the bugs are ironed out and all that kind of stuff. So that's just not a perspective that I would have approached, you know, the topic of Project Treble from. Um, but it sounds like it's going to be really good for, for the ROM community, um, given that Google continues to support, facilitate, you know, make comfortable the ROM community uh, as Android is concerned. Yeah. So... Cool. Well, we know what's going to be good for the emoji community. What's don't that, we, Flo? Jason. Yes. Uh, the long national nightmare is finally <laughs> over. Oh, uh, Google has updated its emoji to place the cheese on the burger, not on the bottom of it, underneath it, <laughs> as it once had it, which caused a lot of uproar. If you remember yeah. several weeks back, this was a big deal. It was such a big deal. Apparently, Google even served it this way at its cafeteria. Was it right? Who knows? Who knows? It is but a subjective thing. But still, in this objective manner, the cheese does have to go on top of the hamburger patty. And it doesn't matter if the hamburger patty is beef or veggie or vegan or what have you. I maintain the cheese goes on top. I mean, it So looks, I'm glad. It, lo it I, looks more normal, but you, I, I got to give Google credit for going against the grain. At least, I, I mean, it's like I wanted to support them in this, but if you remember, I kept si I was silent on this issue because I would put the cheese on the burger. So, uh, Ron Richards, silent yeah. on cheeseburgers. <laughs> you pick uh, your battles, Ron. Yeah. Also, I don't think it, sorry, Skype delay. Also, I mean, uh, <laughs> go, Flo, go, Flo, go, 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 go. Just <laughs> worth noting that Google has also fixed the frothing beer steins so, because apparently it was only halfway filled before, which everybody knows you cannot what? eat an entire pizza with half a pitcher of beer. You need a full pitcher. That's uh, how, how pizza is eaten. How on earth would a beer be frothy on top, but then space between the froth and the drink uh, that's halfway that down? That was the beer with stein. hair. Beer with a wig. I just don't restaurant. understand. This is this is a detail I never noticed until this article, and I was like, "Well, what were they thinking? That's that's wow. weird." But anyways, <laughs> maybe I drink too much beer. I need this to is talk not to normal over there. I want to know what's I, happening. I would love to know who the designer on the like. <laughs> if this was one designer who sat and like. 
who knows what cultural background, you know, but like, I'm going to make this a little bit, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do this or whatever, you know, and it's like, and I feel bad because they come in and just like, oh man, you screwed up that burger. You screwed up that, those beers. We got to fix this. <laughs> He's like, I, I, he or she is like, I have the easiest job in the world. Make yeah. little pictures. Yeah, and little pictures of food. <laughs> make right? cute yeah. little pictures that people will enjoy sending around and still people hate me. <laughs> do, we don't have Oreo emoji, do we? Ooh. No, we don't, do we? That's not in the Unicode, yeah. Yeah. is it? Sandwich yeah. cookies are not in the Unicode, I don't think. Sandwich yeah. cookies. Would it, so that's would it what be they the, are, aren't they? Yeah, I no. guess so. That would be the uh, that would be the clinical <laughs> term for them. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Um, right. well, well, speaking of that, we'll get to our next story. And Jason, you can read the chat in our doc while I do this. Okay. Um, so very, very exciting news uh, for people who use the Google Assistant on Pixel devices. Uh, the the Ballyhooed Google Lens is going to make the jump from the Photos app to the Google Assistant on Pixel devices. Uh, it's ro rolling out widely in select markets. In fact, I believe some folks in the chat room said they already have it. Um, uh, Google Assistant will have a little lens button at the bottom. Uh, tap the button, then anything in the viewfinder, um, and it goes to work without the need to take a photo of it first. So basically, Google Glass ri risen from the ashes in the form of Google Lens baked into Assistant. Very cool. The the amount of progress we've made since Google Glass, uh, not Google Glass, uh, what was it? Google Goggles. That's what it was. Google, Google Goggles. Goggles. If you remember Google Goggles from five, six, seven years ago, um, that was the original idea. You point at something and can search for it. The integration with it into Assistant makes perfect sense. And Google and AI and you know photo recognition and object character recognition is so advanced now that it is like it's ready for prime time. So I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait till I get this update because I want to play with it a lot. Because how many times when you're somewhere and you're like, what is that? You just want to take a picture, you know, just hold your camera at it and we'll tell you what it is. So. Yeah. It's very cool. Nice when it works. And I mean, for, for a while, and actually it, in my well, brief experience with it, it works pretty well. But um, up until now, it's just kind of been in Google Photos. And I don't it know, I have very, I have very little reason to like hop into my photo reel for, right, you know, yeah. for like two years ago and go, oh, yeah, I need to identify that thing. Um, so this would actually be a little bit more usable on a day to day basis. It has not worked for me whatsoever. No? Really? No, but I also I also just feel like I was watching a Pixel 2 commercial the other day and a lot of the things that it's supposed to be doing, it doesn't do like 100% amazing just mm. yet. And I feel like the Google Lens is that particular thing. I feel like that's really going to get amazing. I, I have hope Eventually. for it. It's just in its current yeah. implementation, I'm like, okay, it's not here yet. Do do we fear that it might end up in the in the drawer along with Google Now on Tap, where it seemed like a really cool thing at I/O, and then we finally got it, and we used it maybe a handful of times, and then quick, and then just forgot to mm -hmm. ever use it? Is it going to end up in that same category? I don't know yet. <laughs> I, don't know. I fear we'll that see. it might. I fear that it might. I know. That, that, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I've got, I want to play with it in the field to see if it have see see what see how it does. See if it is fr the the thing about this sort of thing with a new interface to access what you already do, what you already do, right? Like search or you know taking a picture or whatever is that it's got to be frictionless and it's got to reward you with good results because that will encourage you to continue on. Yeah. Right, and so yes. that the, so that, that's where the proof will be. The the hold down the assistant button and take a picture of the screen and search stuff like that. That was frictionless, but I never found a need for it. Right, it was it was a solution really without a problem. Yeah. Um, I think this could be a solution with a problem where there's something, and, and as opposed to taking a picture, you know, like that whole photo to search jump. I feel like Google really wants to embrace because that's really the next evolution mm -hmm. of search. Right. So yeah. <laughs> I think they'll keep trying until they get it right. Yep. 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 Uh, the world is beta in the eyes of Google. I mean, this if you think about it, different. that's like the perfect way to explain existence. Oh, no. oh, very. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to think about that one for a little bit. It's very existential today. Sorry. Yeah, guys. I know. In that kind of it, mood. it really was not even in pre show. <laughs> it was like pre pre show before we had opened the stream. We got we went on a little existential uh, side side. Tangent. Yes, but genuinely too. It wasn't just like Flo no. trying to like make some sort of joke about how she is very existent. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, um, almost as deep of a thought is the thought that we forgot to do our Oreo cookie yes. thing. Yes. I, for a moment, for a moment, I was. I thought like, did I pass out? Did I like miss? Like, <laughs> oh. what time is it? Like, I wake up, Ron. 
We talked about the Oreos before the show, and then we just started the show, and then I was like, did I miss it? What happened? So, Jason, yeah. take it away. I mean, it's not in it's not in my template. It's not baked in there, <laughs> um, and I don't think these are baked either. I, I got some new Oreos today. These are called white fudge covered Oreos. Oh, I just saw those on Amazon today. Did you? And they I, are limited edition. So I've gone to wow. Safeway many times. Yes, uh, I've, I've got a few oh. limited edition things in the queue um, so this is the first of, of a few and we'll see if we can so, get more and maybe send some out to Ron. White I do fudge. love, I do love white fudge. I do love white chocolate and white fudge. Is this, I'm jealous. I'm missing these ones. Um, what, white what, chocolate is just cream flavor though, right? I was going right? to say, so what is white chocolate yeah. really? What white is chocolate it? is delicious. That's what, that's all you need to know. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, so this is like eating an Oreo covered in a blanket of snow. Ooh, I like that description. Clean snow. Um. Yeah, this is pretty good. Darn I like white diddly. chocolate. Yeah. Okay. I give this like an eight. All right. An eight. Yeah. I I'm not I'd surprised. Eat, I'd I'd eat two or three of these in a sitting for sure. Very cool. Are you going to have two or three right now? I might if I have time. Oh wait, no. We're going to be uh, talking about the one plus five T, and both Flo and I. Oh, true. Have you thoughts. could just shove them in your mouth while you're talking. It'll. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want people to subscribe to the show, not oh, unsubscribe. Oh yes, yes, yes. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, and uh, apparently, this box is about to be taken away. So I know that I said I want more of these. Uh, good luck, because there's not many in here, and Burke is here to steal them. So uh, here yes. you go, Burke. Ah, uh, yes. Go ahead, take them. Uh, would you call Burke the Hamburglar. <laughs> oh, Flo, you reached. You reached I, for that. That was, that was good, though. <laughs> I I applaud you. I like that. I like jokes like that. So yes, I would. And that might just be his his new name. I for a while I was calling him the Burker King, along those lines. So we're on the same tan same wavelength here. Bur wow. Uh, with Burke. All right. Uh. So yeah, an eight. And with that. <laughs> It's time for hardware. I just took a bite. I can't talk. Oh, Flo, wow. you go. <laughs> yeah, me too. He went for it. I love it. I, this is this is a great episode already. <laughs> wow, you just went for it, man. <laughs> it's really good. I'm having a hard time not eating it. Maybe I need to give it a higher score. I don't know, but... All I right, want so another dunkability. Sorry. <laughs> kick it off, Lo. What you got? Uh, what we got is is we've got, well, actually, it's you that I really want to hear oh. your thoughts about the OnePlus 5T because okay. I've been, so I used it here and there over the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, so I will kind of spout out thoughts here and there. So I use this as a secondary phone. Jason uses this more as a primary phone. So that's yeah. why I feel like I'm really, I really want to hear what Jason had to say. But uh, for me, I really, really liked the camera, first of all, which I know we're going to get, we're going to get into. That's kind of like a meaty section. Um, but besides that, Jason was right. The face unlock is freaking impeccable. It was so freaking impeccable that I actually tried to uh, entertain my cousins with the technology of the face unlock at Thanksgiving um, on the OnePlus 5T. I don't really think they understood why I was so excited for <laughs> how quickly it worked, but I was I was that impressed. I will say, however, yes, uh, that it took a while for the face unlock to really recognize me. It didn't unlock as quickly after I had put on the dark lipstick because I had originally taking the photo like with no makeup on. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was kind of interesting and that there was like a slight delay. So at Thanksgiving, it was not always like quick on the money. Sometimes it would fail if the light wasn't very good because my lipstick was so dark. And so I would have to unlock it uh, with the fingerprint. <laughs> or I guess actually I'd have to unlock it with a pattern unlock because that was the way it would default. So that was one thing. Uh, I, yeah, thing and by the way, I'll, I'll just jump in there. I had, like, I was getting into my car last night. It was pitch black out. So, well, not probably not pitch black, but it was pretty darn dark outside. There were, I think there was a street light, you know, ways down. So it's not like there was much light seeping into the car at all. And face and lock still totally worked. And I was really surprised. Like, wow. I, like, I wouldn't imagine that the front-facing camera would be 
accurate or, or good enough to be able to pick that up with such low amount of light coming in. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Because if if it's just like, eh, whatever, <laughs> sure, it works. We get, a, we get a silhouette of your head and that looks right. Sure, you're in. Um, I doubt it's doing that, but um, it, it worked when I didn't think it was going to work. I thought that well, was Well, it sounded impressive. like it's it's not doing that because if it had a heart, it had to like calculate for a second when I had the darker like lipstick on, I'm assuming it like, I maybe I contoured differently or something in the, however it did it. I don't know. I, I'm just making inferences. Uh, but beyond the face unlock, the battery life on this thing is pretty awesome. And I have to say, like living with the Pixel 2, granted it's a smaller one and it's a smaller phone than the OnePlus 5T, but it, I am not like super satisfied with the battery life on it. Um, but with the battery life on the OnePlus 5T, I left it on the TV stand for about two days and I came back to it and it still had 82% of its battery life. So it just sat there quietly. Um, I really like how energy efficient it is. Yeah, really energy efficient. And obviously, you know, part of that, and we talked about that a little bit last week is, hi, everybody tweeting me suddenly, um, <laughs> is uh, is the fact that, you know, that the display, even though it's a, a larger display than mm -hmm. the last year's model, is a 1080p display, which I think is, a, I think is totally fine. Like, and I can't tell the difference. Nah. I can't tell the difference between it and the Note 8. I, you know, I was kind of using them to play a little bit in the backyard today. And um, I don't notice any difference. They're still both very like nicely saturated screens. You know, the default wallpaper that comes on this. I have a different wallpaper that's just as neon, but I love looking at it on the phone. And the other thing I have to say is I am reminded once again why I enjoy the bigger screen uh, because playing Animal Crossing, the new one mm -hmm. uh, for mobile on this phone is actually a lot easier because I have more traction room for my finger because of the bigger display. So I kind of remember now why you might want that bigger display. However, uh, the phone, and this is just kind of like a benchmark that I use, like a personal anecdotal benchmark, but the phone is really hard to get out of my purse. So it's a lot easier with a smaller phone. This one, because of its size, tends to get like stuck in a lot of stuff, which is like, Flo, why are you putting so much stuff in? But I just feel like it's worth noting just for people who might be like me and do shove a lot of things into a purse. Just sometimes just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's necessarily like easier to find. Mm -hmm. On, on, to add to the bigger kind of comment there, not I mean, I haven't got to play with the OnePlus 5T, although I'm very excited to. Um, recently, I've been bouncing between the Moto uh, X2 Force and my Google Pixel 1. And so the past couple, um, uh, last week into the Thanksgiving holiday, I was on the Pixel and going from the bigger to the smaller. And remember, Jason, I've always been pro smaller, right? Like I like a, a, a small, yeah. I don't like the, the huge. I got to admit, Google Pixel 1, sure felt tiny in my hand and I was having some trouble typing and I was like, why is this so small? And I was missing the bigger form factor with the Moto X2 so much so that I switched back to it over the weekend, uh, mainly to play with the, uh, with the echo thing, which we're gonna talk about next, but flow, I, the, the bigger versus smaller was very top of mind on, uh, for me recently. So yeah, I can't believe, and I, I can't believe I'm, I'm going pro bigger because that's, I used to be staunchly <laughs> against it. So <laughs> Well, they're making apps these days so that you really kind of benefit from having a slightly larger screen in your pocket. Yeah, so it's true. like you might as well get a phone that takes advantage of that. But it's then it's like, well, you know, so the OnePlus 5T just kind of I'm just going to hold up here on my little webcam <laughs> for you. I have the pretty red case um, that came in the press box. It's super nice and super soft. And I love the default OnePlus cases and quite Honestly, I wonder why Google doesn't do the same with its cases. Here I have the um, fabric case for the Pixel 2. So here's how they are kind of comparison in size. If you ah, let me hold it above the lower third so you can kind of see that. Yeah, it's a bit bigger, but it's not like that much bigger. And the fact that it's thin, uh, like, correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but I believe it's thinner than the Pixel 2 XL. Uh, Possibly. Good question. I wish I had my Pixel Two. I don't know, with but me. it's it's a thin and light phone. I'll just say they're, they're um, pretty comparable. If, yeah. if memory serves. Yeah. In that regard. Do you, I want to? So, Jason, I want to hear your thoughts and and also hear your camera experience. Yeah. So, um, so yes. So this has been you know I've, I've been using it as my my daily driver probably now for a little more than a week. 
anyways and let me tell you it's really hard to pull myself away from the pixel 2 like <laughs> I, I whatever it, it is what it is you know it's it's hard to pull yourself away from your phone and get interested in playing with another device when you finally get settled in on your device you know anyways you get over it i got over it what, what were you uh, gonna say i was gonna add to that and say that uh to what you were saying just for those of you wondering out there, if you really rely on Google Assistant for like commands, I did a lot of my smart home commands from the OnePlus 5T from the Google Assistant app and just by long pressing the home button and it worked just as fine. So I didn't have problems with that just as an aside. But to to also repoint out that what you know was brought up on last week's show, if you want to do it with the screen off mm -hmm. and your, your device locked, you can't do that with the 5T. Yes. You can do that on the Pixel. And actually, the person who sent in that question sent me a little bit of a, a an email, a little, little bit of a scathing email afterwards. I mean, like, ah, man, it didn't, it didn't sound like you guys took the question seriously. The reason I really want this is because when I'm driving, I don't want to have yeah. to pick up my phone. And this is a big, this is a big issue. Like, more phones should do this. And I, I completely, I hear you on that one. Um, but, you know, apparently not all phones do that. And there might be a number of reasons why. There might be uh, some sort of hardware inside that allows for some phones to do that more efficiently like based on you know the processing power required to keep it alert at that point maybe pixels doing some things different things to make that possible there are third-party device manufacturers who are also building that support into their devices so um you're right we didn't get a great answer as far as why that wasn't put into the 5 and the 5t but other than that it just isn't so there are benefits there uh with the pixel over this uh, but as far as this phone is concerned i feel like it really continues oneplus's tradition you know of, of high quality device uh affordable price it the, the device feels really nice in daily use i really like even even though I know that this means that you know with with nothing extending beyond the screen on the front, it means if this lands face down, you know it's more likely to shatter or whatever. But it's a nice design touch to have the corners kind of curved slightly. It's not like a true edge display, but you get this like rounding that's kind of hard to show off on the screen uh, around all of the edges on the device, and that just gives that helps to kind of elevate the the design aesthetic of the phone. Um, which I think is pretty great. Um, let's see here. The display is awesome. It's as sharp as it really needs to be. We've kind of already talked a little bit about that. I feel like it's a good trade-off for what you get in battery. I had excellent battery life on this throughout the week, and actually, like, I didn't even charge it um, yesterday. I didn't put it on a charger last night, and, I mean, it, you know, I'm still doing okay today. So I used it yesterday and today, basically which maybe this just wasn't, a, these weren't two big smartphone day, use days for me, but I was able to do it. Um, I still love the, you know, the inclusion of the Switch, which is becoming kind of a staple, kind of hard to see here, a staple of OnePlus devices to have this Switch to toggle between uh, different, you know, modes versus Ringer On versus the middle mode, which I'm trying to do sideways here, um, which kind of puts it into like a vibrate or a do not disturb mode uh, up to the top, which is fully silent. And uh, ni nice to have that switch and they keep doing that. I'm happy that they do. But um, let's see here, dash charging, awesome, super fast. I love that they moved the, the fingerprint sensor onto the back and uh, the face unlock, you know, made it so that I only really have to use this here and there, I don't I don't have to rely on the fingerprint sensor. So if you feel comfortable using face unlock, you're going to get a good experience on the 5T. Pretty pleasantly surprised there. But yeah, we should definitely talk about the camera because I think in the past with the 5, the camera was a very big selling point for this price category. Really good you know, pictures. Maybe it's hard to compare the pictures that you get out of the 5 and the 5T to phones like the Pixel or the Galaxy S8 series cameras or the iPhone uh, iPhone 8 or 10, uh, 8 plus or, or 10 pictures, but I have, have been pretty pleased with the pictures that I've gotten out of the 5T. Um, took a lot of outdoor shots. Really like that. You see the crane, the, the, the bird out there in the water a little bit. Um, if you zo start to zoom in, you see a little bit of, you know, a little bit of kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of a milky quality. I don't know if you see it in, in the hair right there that where the pixelation kind of gets milky. Yeah. I saw that in my photos as well. 
So you get a little bit of that, that, that kind of smacks of, of smartphone photography, in my opinion. But uh, when you're fully zoomed out and, and, you know, for the for the most part, the pictures that I got, I was really happy with. I'm not always super happy with what I get out of the portrait mode shots. Mm -hmm. they, and this is a this is a good example. Uh, my daughter is in focus and everything around her is kind of out of focus, except for that fence and car in the back right area that is totally in focus uh if you I don't know. oh yeah it's distracting yeah. it's yeah. distracting and once my you, eye once you notice it it's hard to uh, kind of unsee it yeah <laughs> uh that picture cracks me up um, Whoa, that's crazy but anyway yeah <laughs> see how it's like totally sharp back yeah. there so i got weird little yeah. issues like that sometimes it works sometimes it didn't but it's nice to have and when it does work great just don't expect it to work every time and this is what my dog ate for uh thanksgiving so <laughs> A little bonus there. So that's that's what I thought. I I think all in all, pretty happy with the camera. It's not it's not you know as amazing as some of the premium cameras out there, but for this price category, I think it's awesome. Um, I brought a couple of comparison shots. We can just jump through them real quick if you want. Uh, yeah. Of the OnePlus Five T. Let's do that. Two. Yeah. Okay. So that's just a photo that uh, taking with the Five T. So <gasps> nice hat. <laughs> and vest there's a story behind that um oh, I'm sure. that's just like indoor i didn't really i didn't re I, I didn't get much time with it indoors yeah. so actually i can't speak to its low light performance as well as i can during daylight but here this is in the backyard so this first one is a note eight it's a shot with a note eight mm -hmm. um this one is shot with the one plus 5t okay uh and then there's a third one that is shot with a Pixel 2, and all three of them, just worth noting, were all blown out. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah, they all were, like, blown out in the background. Okay, like up on the top of the wood yeah. area right up there? And you can't see very well on this particular screen, but there's more of a blue tint to, like, the Pixel 2 photos. Uh, yep, whereas, I see it. Yeah, whereas on the OnePlus... Um, when you zoom in like to the open mouth area where all like the <laughs> the dirt vomit is coming out, um, <laughs> I found it to be just as clear as the Pixel 2. So that was pretty pleasing, that even though I did see really some nice. of that. Yeah, I did see some of that milky effect. But like you can tell uh, much better. You can distinguish between like sort of particles in there versus like the Note 8. Yeah. Nice. It's actually a really, uh, really good kind of source image you know, for lighting and detail and stuff. Um, and actually, Victor, if you want to go to the last two photos, I can just show you a selfie with it. <laughs> um, so this is just to show like how it zooms up close. Oh yeah, the when zoom. you do the double zoom. So this is a regular selfie. Sorry, Miss Fane over here. But I just <laughs> want to show you what it looks like in beauty mode. So go to the last one. It's really too much i just want to say <laughs> does it give you controls much. to like lessen it yes. or is and it this just is, i think this is at max which is just like insane yeah so just anybody out there because i see you people using beauty mode okay i see you out there <laughs> so there's your sample <laughs> oh beauty you. mode it just it just <laughs> continues to exist doesn't it <laughs> Listen, I got to try it. I do it so that you don't have to. Good. Okay? You're doing the hard work so because that no one I else has to. airbrush, okay? You know, this is <laughs> We can't all life. afford, an, uh, yeah, a design uh, airbrush true. team. Uh, cool. So that's the OnePlus 5T. I think, it's a, I think it's a great phone, great for the price, and a worthy upgrade to the 5 and not that much more than what the 5 cost. Um, you could do a whole lot worse than buying this phone. And that's, that's, I think, selling it short. I think it's a great, yeah. great device for its price. What, what would be your final, your final word on this? Uh, I think if you want something that's not a Google experience and not a Samsung experience, I think the OnePlus 5T is another, just, it's a, it's a good alternative experience to consider. But again, like Jason mentioned, you're giving up some things. You're giving up some of that Google hugging. You know, mm -hmm. that Google circle around your life, um, <laughs> which maybe to some people sounds much more appealing. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of people so, that are happy to do that. And it's 500 bucks. Right. <laughs> Even on Black Friday, some of the best phones, you know, 
still were down to 500 bucks. So yeah, yeah totally. Um, and by the way, uh, if you live in China, there's going to be a lava red one plus five T coming out. So there'll be two color options. Too bad. We won't see that here. I got to tell you, I would, that was super disappointed that we're I not going to see that here. Cause I'll tell you that phone is hot. Yeah. That, yeah. that phone is awesome. Yeah. It looks nice. <laughs> now, why do they, I feel like this isn't the first time that they've done that, but I, there's probably a reason. Because right. I bet you it'll sell like hotcakes over there because more people know about OnePlus. Yeah. Right? I mean, I yeah. feel like we need to, we need like the Android fans here, not us, but the Android fans need to show their fealty and just, you know. <laughs> yeah. I just want phones that look different. Is that too much to ask? Like a I red, the red, if you had this red phone, you would you would stand out on the subway plot. Maybe that's a bad thing, but like the, yeah. like I, I you know much like the next bit Robin, much like the you know the little colored uh, the the orange button on the Pixel Two, the the Panda version of the Pixel Two, the two tone. Like give me phones that don't just look like anonymous black monolithic boxes. You know, like give me a red one. That's awesome. Man, J JJ a lot in of life chat. Lessons. Yeah, JJ in yeah. chat point, makes a very good point. Yeah, uh, which I had not considered, but is totally the case. The red, the color red, yeah. symbolizes good luck in yeah. China. So this is probably you know that's part of the reason why choosing the color red uh, makes so much yeah. sense in China. It'll probably sell really well. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Right. Very cool color though. I like right. OnePlus. Good, good job. Yeah. All right. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to play with it. I'm looking forward to it after hearing you guys talk about it. So. Yeah, you got a lot, a lot to look forward to. It's a great phone. Cool. Well, I got to play with something that you guys didn't get to. Nana, nana, nana. Whatever. Um, so my my good friends over at Motorola sent over the latest Moto mod for me to check out on the Moto Z2 Force, and I, Flo, I believe they sent it to you, but uh, the SIM card requirement got in your way, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we're talking about here is the Moto mod. Alexa speaker, smart speaker. There you go. It's it's a wedge. a word, a word, Ron. Oh, mm, a word. <laughs> How can you? It's what it says it on the back. I know that's the yeah. challenge. That's the challenge it's, we face every day when we talk about Amazon's voice assistant. Yeah, it's not an Echo. It is right. a it is uh -uh. a Moto Mod a word speaker. That's the that's the description of it. And so basically what it is, is it's a speaker that's not uh, dissimilar in size to the JBL Motomod speaker. But the big difference is that it has uh, this little Amazon A-Word logo plate right here and this mm -hmm. kind of rubber – this rubber kind of feet and there's also right here there's a um the plug to plug in your USB C cable and what that does is when you use it with the Moto Mod and those watching the video can see it you snap the Moto Mod on right and the thing just looks you know it does look enormous it's a very bulky kind of thing but what's genius about this design is that this is not meant to be like you, you can use it while you're commuting or whatever but if you sit at a desk for eight hours a day or you spend a lot of time with your phone you know kind of uh, uh, you know uh, not moving you know like not traveling or whatever you can put uh the moto mod speaker on your desk and have it face up like it is here in the picture on the video and you plug your charger cable in and it's a great little desk accessory mm. and it becomes an amazon echo uh which is really kind of cool uh, it's it, so as I mentioned, the requirement is that you have to have a, a Motorola phone that supports Moto Mods, and you have to have an active SIM card in it. So if you have a Motorola phone that's just using it on Wi-Fi, this won't work. It does require a SIM card. Why? Which I, find it, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I didn't that's think what too I'm deep curious into about. Oh, you know yeah. why? Because I think I know why though. Actually, why? Going back to that crazy smart home lady thing. Um, <laughs> You know, there comes when you take these assistants off the Wi-Fi network, they kind of lose their place. So I'm wondering if having it be on cellular connection all the time keeps it just in line so that it always works no matter where you are versus relying on a Wi-Fi connection. Because if you're yeah. like, at least that's what I'm thinking, because that's Maybe. the issue that I face having these multiple. I don't know. This is just something that I've encountered moving smart speakers uh back and forth between places so maybe right. that's why hmm. <laughs> who knows but either way um it got i did i looked at some of the reviews that are out there and it pretty much got hammered in the reviews because it was so bulky because it was so odd in shape and i mm. feel like the people who looked at it didn't quite get it this is a great dock accessory 
this is uh, if I was into Amazon, a word and echo devices, if I was in that ecosystem, I would get this for my desk at work and just leave the speaker plugged into the wall. And when I got to work, I would just pop the phone onto the dock and it charges. And then you've got an Amazon Echo at your disposal. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. It's not great for the mobility aspect, you know, like I wouldn't walk around, you know, like it's it's very it's very big to hold like on the subway and that sort of thing. <laughs> I talk a lot about the subway on the show. I'm, I apologize to everyone listening who <laughs> is tired of hearing me talk about the New York City subway. But um, it, this is this is an indoor toy. Right. And right. I think that it's really clever in terms of the design and the application. Uh, it costs one hundred and forty nine dollars. So it's, you know, a hundred bucks more than an Echo Dot. That's for sure. But the integration with your phone is really kind of neat. Um, the Amazon Echo app uh, exists on your phone and that you can then I believe I'm going to try it right now. I believe you can use it without the speaker plugged in, though. So you basically turn your phone into an Amazon Echo. Um, which is pretty cool. And yes, in, indeed it does. It works. Um, it is listening to me now currently. But uh, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to say the trigger word. But um, it, question. See? I'll look into it. There it is. It was listening. Um, but so you can use it without the speaker hooked up. And so basically for all intents and purposes, turns your phone into an Echo. You can access A Word, Amazon A Word services. If, that, if you are on that ecosystem, I think it's pretty cool. Um, as always with these Moto mods, a hundred plus dollar price tag, one hundred forty nine ninety nine in this case is a pretty penny. But if you're thinking, okay, I'm on Amazon A Word, I have Echoes at home, I want to have an Echo at work, um, but I also want to charge my phone, here's a solution for you. So I give a thumbs up. I think it's cool. I think it's clever. Uh, if I was on Amazon Echo stuff and not Google Home, I would and and I was rocking the Moto Z2 Force every day. I would definitely consider it. I think it's very it's a very cool, clever way to use your phone. Yeah, seeing so. seeing this as as something that's bulky is looking at it through the lens of this being another way to use your phone on an everyday basis as a phone instead right. of. A, a way to turn your phone into a portable speaker, you know, in which case this is not that bulky if, if you compare it to other portable speakers. So, and, and I really, and I really think that the public workspace office environment is where this really sings because it like, if I, I totally get the argument, you, you want an Amazon echo, just get an Amazon echo at home, spend the same amount of money you're going to spend on it. Right. But right. I can't. I don't want to get an Amazon Echo and put it on my desk at work. I don't want any all anyone else accessing it. The idea that this only works when your phone is attached to it—that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. And so I think I think that the the adding Amazon Echo or Amazon A Word services uh, to a workplace environment, this is a very clever application. So mm. I like it. Sean in the chat room um, posits that Alexa requires a SIM because you need, this is or Sean's words, you need an active phone number to be registered to make drop-in calls through Alec through Amazon's voice assistant, oh. VA word. Interesting. I almost said it. Could be. Could uh, be. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's like definitive uh, requirement or what, but that's a, now, that's a I, good... I aspect of I, that for sure. I don't have an Echo, so I haven't set one up. I, I, I bought one for my sister and, and my brother-in-law, my nieces, and they love it. But I didn't do, I wasn't there for the setup. Mm. Do you, when you set up an Echo, do you need to pair it to a phone number? It's a good question. I don't know. Why, why I mean, I'm, that device exists on a Wi-Fi network. Would you, like, I, why does that requirement exist on the phone and not on a device? But the, the odds of you using a Moto Z2 Force without a SIM card probably are pretty slim. Yeah. Um, you know, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. Victor, uh, what, what do you say? I saw the microphone swing over. You don't have to pair it with a phone number. Okay. But it yeah. asks to sync with your contacts if you want to do the, the, um, the drop in calling to other people's got it okay yeah, Echo, yeah so. i don't know that's strange yeah. mystery anyways it's okay. pretty cool i dig it i think it's clever i like the innovation okay. keep trying new things i'm yeah. all for it uh, yep that's kind of what the moto mods are all about i think and we're, we're seeing that time and time again so you know it might not make a lot of sense uh piece by piece but they're creating a portfolio of these things and i think the idea is if you've got the phone you've got all these options they're not all going to speak to you but one of them probably will and it might not be the most obvious thing either you know so awesome um so that is hardware and i think from here we just have a bunch of email insert email, email. bumper that doesn't exist um but uh flow you got the first one 
First one. Your first. We've got a first email. Um, I don't know if anybody understands <laughs> the, that I am trying the, to reference. It's the, e it's the email rodeo. Well, I was actually trying to reference Strong Bad, but perhaps I should go with the email rodeo. That sounds a lot more fun. Uh, so we've got this first one is from David. David says, I am hoping for a miracle answer. I purchased the Pixel 2 on launch day partially because they offered a trade-in program using Google Financing. Currently, both phones are on Google Financing. Initially, I was supposed to receive the trade-in kit within seven days to my home address. Well, nothing arrived. Contacted Google about the issue, and they offered to resend and confirmed address to validate. Another week went by, still nothing. So I called to see what the issue was and changed the address to my work, to which I received my Pixel 2 and a few weeks later, my Google Home Mini. Well, guess what? Still nothing. I've escalated to their senior advisors with promise of delivery and still nothing. I tweeted the situation at Sundar Pichai and was asked to DM the Google team and guess what? Still nothing. <laughs> it's almost been two months now and now I'm paying for two phones. Any advice or did I miss something? Please tell me what to do. I need what I need to do to get this trade in. Finally, would you still trade it in given all these issues? Hope you guys are doing better than me. Man, still nothing. Still nothing. Still nothing. Um, well, David, let's see. It says here, article C2 in the Google store terms state that you are the only owner of your device and no other third party holds any rights of any kind in your device, including installment or leasing programs. This means that you need to pay off the existing balance of your previous phone before you can trade it in. So basically, it sounds like maybe there's trouble in that realm. Um, of course, that's kind of hard to solve if you're not hearing back from Google. Yeah, like I don't know if that's the reason why he's not getting the kit necessarily, but that's in the the terms there. And I like I got the impression from reading over this that David was under the impression that, okay, I'll trade in my other phone and then I won't have that old payment, you know, installation, payment installation, and instead I'll have the new one. I don't know if it works like that. Like you still, like you're still paying on it. And I think you have to pay it off in order to be able to trade it in because you don't own it to trade it in for all that value yet. If yes. you're still paying on it. Right. But I hope, yes, but I hope somebody would have. Yeah. You would, you, somebody at Google should, should tell you if that's the case. I don't know if they know the whole story. So it's, I almost see two problems here. One, that you haven't got the kit, and I have no idea why you haven't. Um, welcome to you know the spotty um, experience of Google customer service. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. Um, but B, once you do get that kit, I don't know if it's going to work the way that you think it's going to, and you should definitely look into that, unless I'm totally misunderstanding something in this email, which I very well could be. It is worth, I will say, I am missing the, uh, apparently I still have like two days left before I need to receive my Google Home mini code. And I talked to customer service oh. yesterday. So apparently I still have two days. So by tomorrow I should have a code because that's when the four weeks will be up after the shipment of my phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so maybe there's just a lot of stuff going on in Google customer service land. Maybe so. And now that we're talking about this, I'm realizing my original Pixel, um, I did the trade-in as well. And I got the kit and I sent it back to him a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago. I've heard nothing from Google. <gasps> um, so I'm realizing now, like, maybe there is something. <laughs> maybe they're a little overwhelmed by the holidays. I don't know. But I haven't heard anything yet. I haven't gotten even a, a confirmation of receipt. Like, we got your phone. Now we're going to blah, blah, blah. Um, nothing. Uh, so I've I guess I have to start looking into that. One little piece of advice for David. I got on with customer server yesterday. I did the chat, which you can do yeah. at uh, the Google store. And what the rep did is, uh, I'm, it was a she, cause that was her name. Um, she sent me an email and it basically gave me a direct link to her so that I can contact her. Um, if I don't get my code in a couple of days. So maybe you can get a customer service rep to at least like legitimately rep you. Yeah, champion your <laughs> Yeah, your exactly. Champion you something mm -hmm. uh, to that effect. See if that works. Hmm. 
Uh, keep us posted. Let us know how that goes, Please. David. I don't know if we necessarily gave you the answer you were looking for because it's hard to know why it's, yeah. it's falling apart behind the scenes. But uh, curious to know how that wraps up. Patrick Olson wrote in to say one problem. Let's see here. Oops, I just scrolled out. Oh, so this is a this is an email with a couple of things. First of all, one problem I have with VPN security is an Amazon Fire HD 8 inch. It's a 2015, the fifth generation. Uh, though there are three zillion free VPN apps, my paid VPN does not have an app in Amazon's App Store. My factory default Fire OS is 5.4.0.1, and it's currently five. Oh, and the current version is 5.6.0.0 is there a way to turn this into an android device uh to which i say there are lots of links that you can actually go to if you have the amazon fire hd tablet line uh do a search i found one on how to geek actually uh that was posted very recently on how to install the play store and play services on a tablet it doesn't take very long it takes like five minutes to do it's pretty straightforward and it walks you through step by step you don't have to root the device or anything like that uh you could you could go that route uh, and you could flash like a a you know, an AOSP version or something of Android on that way. Or you could install Play Services and Play Store. And I'm assuming what you mean is that your VPN service does have an app in the the Play Store. And if so, that would allow you to get to it and then use it. Um, so hopefully that'll help. I, I mean, along those lines, I'm going to be... Um, doing this myself because i we bought for our kids both the kids ver the kids version of amazon's fire hd8 tablets because i want to kind of see what that's all about and give them their own tablet and all the extra coverage that you get from buying the amazon tablets like covered for two years no questions asked on on uh, any sort of you know hardware malfunction or drops and cracks the screen replaced no questions asked. So um, I'll be interested because I'm definitely going to be doing this to kind of open it up so that it isn't just locked to Amazon stuff. Um, and then uh, Patrick says, second, in January, I might be switching from an iPhone to an Android phone, depending on what smartphones from two years ago my family and I can get cheaply. Uh, is there a way to sync two Google accounts on an Android phone without a need to sign out and then sign in? And yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Do, does either of you know the, is there a maximum number of Google accounts you can sync to a single phone? I don't I even know. know. What there is. I want to say 10. I don't know. 10, 10 accounts? That's what I, no, I don't know for sure. I oh, just okay. want to say 10. Okay. I mean, <laughs> right, here we go. Here we go on Stack Exchange. Okay. He found it. I was just Googling someone, it. Someone, uh, any user can associate up to 10 devices to his or her account. That's how many devices to an account, uh, but how many users to a, interesting. All right, keep going. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that there is a, a restriction. And I mean, it sounds like as long as it's more than one, you're okay. <laughs> uh, it, in which case, it's super easy. You just go into the settings. You can sync multiple accounts to any Android devices just found there in the users section. Yeah. Here we go. In the Google product forums. Oh, no. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to do. I just want to do a podcast where we ask questions and then we search for them and try to find the answers. And we keep and we keep thinking we found them and then we go, oh, uh, never mind. Yep. Oh, I found it. Okay, so we can oh, literally do uh, a whole never two mind. hours on that. <laughs> yeah. And then Patrick says, finally, Flo, thanks for choosing. Be my eyes. I am visually impaired and am glad. Be my eyes now has an app on Android for free apps for the blind and visually impaired. It is considered one of the best. Awesome. I saw it was featured, by the way, in the Google Play Store today. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. So good work, Airflow. Uh, and thank you for sending that in, Patrick. Appreciate it. All right, Ron, you are up next. I want to. I just want to sit at home and add accounts to my phone and see until I run out. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. Let's set up 20 <laughs> Google accounts and yeah, then try and import them all into a single device. <laughs> let's see it. Well, I'm down. I, let's Saturday. I'm not doing anything. Let's do it. All right. Uh, next email comes in from Richard Quist, uh, who says, thanks for taking the time to respond to my email on last week's show. Of course, Richard, you're welcome. And I love getting the email, seeing the emails from the Android community. Everyone, please keep them coming in. That's awesome. So Richard says, after hearing what you had to say and seeing what I think was a great Cyber Monday deal on Amazon, 
$399 for both the phone and the 360 degree for the essential phone. I went ahead and ordered it. Nice. Now I just have, now I just have to find a decent case for it. Sorry, Ron. Hey, man, you be you. Get a case for that phone. Protect it. Although I do think that the essential phone is so durable that you don't need a case. But get it get it in your hands. See what you think. But, yeah, so Richard was able to capitalize. In fact, I sent this to you and uh, to Jason and Flo when I saw it hit on Monday morning um, that, uh, that Amazon was offering the essential phone with the 360-degree camera for just $399. And that was echoes of the next bit Robin. Like, oh, my God, it's $299 on Amazon. Right. Uh, kind of freak out or $199 at one point. Yeah. Uh, that was a great opportunity if somebody wanted to pick it up. If I was in the market for a new phone, I totally would have, although I have a strict rule that uh, after Thanksgiving, I don't buy myself anything until until after Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, so I can never benefit from these uh, these deals. But unfortunately, the deal was only available on Monday. Uh, so if you missed it, you missed it. But it could be a sign of things to come because like we saw at the next bit, Robin, uh, that inventory moved over time and you saw that price fluctuate. So if you're curious about the essential phone, bookmark the product page on Amazon. Keep an eye out for it. It could dip down to three ninety nine again and you got to be ready to, to pull the trigger. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that price point again. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good. Uh, good way to pick it up. And congratulations yeah. on your new phone, Richard. All right, Flo, you got the next one. Well, this one is from Jeff D. And Jeff D. says, I need your opinion. Okay. My wife's Nexus 6 has reached end of life with no more updates coming from Google and the battery is starting to get wonky. We really don't want to spend 900, 800 or even 600 on a new flagship class phone. I'm trying to stick to a $500 budget. So given that, here's the question. Essential phone or OnePlus 5T? Or is there Ooh. another good choice? You should probably know that she has gotten very used to the huge Nexus 6 screen, and she uses the camera quite a lot. The 5T has the bigger screen, but which camera is better? Well, Jeff, I think given the essential, I know they're talking about working on the camera, but I feel like given the initial reviews of the phone, uh, and given the OnePlus 5T, there are already reviews out about it as well. I feel like the OnePlus 5T is kind of like the best choice in this particular scenario. It shoots really well. It's about that large size that your wife is used to. And um, as long as she doesn't mind a slightly different uh, a version of the Android that's not completely under Google's thumb, I mean, I feel like it's a pretty good deal. Now, you know, one one magical component of this request is, hinges around updates. Um, how, that is and, that is true. That is I, true. I'm trying to think uh, as far as the history of updates. Essential seems to be doing OK so far. Of course, they you know, they, they don't have a, a proven track record because they're so new, uh, yeah. but they've done a lot with the updates that they've done. What is the long term ramification? You know, what is the long term kind of view? It is Andy Rubin, so one could argue that he's probably pretty focused on what Android users do want, which are you know a, a dedicated focus on mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. updates. So maybe there's something good there. How does OnePlus do when it comes to updates over time? I believe it's been here and there. <laughs> Because I know it's fluctuated through the years. Because I know Alex was in here earlier uh, helping prior to the show. He has the OnePlus 3 or the 3T. It just got Oreo a couple of days ago. So the OnePlus 3 and 3T got Oreo before their newest phone, the 5T, that just launched, gets Oreo. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, that is something to consider. Uh, but as far as both phones go, they're both like these independent phones and that it kind of comes with the territory of buying like an independent phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I feel like the OnePlus 5T, because we're talking about the big screen and using the camera quite a lot, and the 5T has the double press the home button to launch the camera. Uh, the 5T has the, the double camera on the back, so you can do like the portrait mode and all that. Um, and I know the Essential has... How's, Again, how's the, the initial reviews were not favorable of the Essentials camera hardware. So. They, well, they weren't, but they very um, swi relatively swiftly have rolled out those software da updates to address those concerns and kind of removed a lot of the, those issues. Yeah, I got to imagine that a lot of the bumps that we saw with Essential out of the gate, mainly around the camera, will be saw, will be resolved with those software updates, you know, and that they're going to do everything in their power. It's funny because it's like, 
I feel like OnePlus is established and still has a lot to prove, but Essential really has a lot to prove. And that potentially could be customer advantageous if you're willing to get on board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, hey, here's something to consider. You can return an Essential phone within 15 days after getting it. Uh, and for you with the, so you'll get a refund of the purchase price minus any restocking fee, which is usually like 25 or 35 bucks. So, and it's only $300. Right, four hundred dollars. Sorry, four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah, if you if you can afford it, take a flyer. I'm with you, Flo. Exactly. Take it. Yep. Try it out. Give yourself those two weeks. Be on the money about it. Set yourself a reminder. Uh, whatever you need to do. And if you don't get your update that you need for the camera or whatever within that time, and you know your wife thinks this is not something I want, then go and get a OnePlus Five T. Boom. Problem yeah. solved. Yeah. yeah, don't be like me when you wanted to watch Inside Out and you signed up for Stars' uh, subscription service to get the one week free and then forget about it. And now it's four months later and you're like, why am I still giving money to Stars? <laughs> yes. well, turns out they have a wonderful movie selection. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how they get you, Ron. It yeah, worked. Yeah, so. It oh, worked. Speak speaking of that, completely unrelated to phones, but to media – I got to give YouTube TV credit because uh, here we are in the holiday season and I love, 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 love the Rankin Bass uh, holiday specials. Uh -huh. And so the right? other night, uh, the other night we we got our Christmas trees and me and my wife were like, OK, what do we want to watch? Oh, let's watch, you know, here, you know, here uh, Santa Claus is coming to town and it aired on ABC two days ago. I didn't set YouTube TV DVR to record it. I didn't do anything. But it was I searched for it. It's like this is on ABC two days ago. Press play to watch. And it was there magically. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Very, very cool. That's so, great. Yeah. There you go. Rank and bass uh, short, yep. uh, shows are awesome. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube TV. That's great. <laughs> I, I think that the answer, Jeff, is it's really difficult to go wrong between those two. They're both so similar, but yet like the Essential has a smaller battery than the OnePlus. Um, they, they both got their own, Their you know, the Essential has the, the modular capability, the OnePlus does not. So they're both like right on par, but just with little points pushing one a little bit further, a little bit behind the other. So you and really can't go wrong. And ask her if she wants a headphone jack. Uh, that's another. That's a really Problem good point. Solved. I bet you. I bet you she will have an opinion either way on that. Yes. And that's a that's a pretty big uh, selling point. Uh, good point. Frank writes in to say, like Flo, I bought the smaller Pixel 2 as soon as it became available in the Google Store. I have not experienced any of the issues that have been reported, but I am experiencing a strange issue when using the headphone dongle. If I already have the dongle and headphones connected to my phone and start up some type of music, uh, media player, I must remove the dongle, reconnect it, and then press play to get audio. When the player changes tracks, I lose audio even though the player continues. I have had this with the default media player, other player I have installed, and even YouTube when one video ends and I try to play another. Bluetooth headphones work fine. Is it just me or have I done something weird? Says I have watched AAA for years. All of you be have begun to feel like friends to me, except for Ron. He is more like a drinking buddy from college, LOL. I'll, I'll take that as a compliment, although yeah. I didn't drink in, I didn't drink in college, but uh, I get the sentiment. Thank you, Frank. You're <laughs> You're my buddy too. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I, I, I can at least speak from my own experience. This, uh, the Pixel Two, is the first device that I've lived with with in the dongle life. I would say, um, and just kind of had to accept the fact that I, I have to use a dongle in order to use my wired headphones. And I have absolutely had issues with the dongle not working. Mm -hmm. And the only way that I can fix it is to unplug it and plug it back in. And even sometimes that doesn't work where I have to like mm -hmm. then unplug it, turn it over and plug it back in. And for whatever That's stupid reason that fixes so it. So weird. Mm -hmm. That's so weird because I, I after Moto Z2 Force for months, no issue with the dongle. Yeah. Never had to unplug it. Never didn't work. I wonder if it's a Pixel 2 thing. I don't know. Or a Pixel 2 dongle. Yeah. I don't, Hasn't I, happened I don't to know. me. Yeah. So I don't know. That's weird. On on a similar note, though, um, I got my alert from the Google uh, store that the really blue Bluetooth headphone earbuds were back in stock. So I bought them. Oh, 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 the uh, the Pixel Buds. The Pixel Buds, yep. You got so, the Buds, man. So when, well, when no, are you getting they, them? They were back in stock and then ships in seven to nine weeks. <laughs> so 
So it, we totally have was, them, though. And that was like a week or two before Thanksgiving. So maybe I'll get it by Christmas. Oh. Doubtful. So I'm thinking 2018. I'm going to yeah. be on the Pixel Buds. We'll, so, we'll yeah. be bringing you our, uh, our our fresh review of the Pixel Buds in yeah. February. Although I got to tell you, I was reading some of the reviews about them. And again, the reviewers were just brutal to them. I'm very yes. curious to play with them and see what they're like. So, yeah. But I wanted to embrace my post headphone jack world that i've been you know i wanted to i, I want i want to walk the walk here people i'm, yeah. I'm trying well i'm happy so. that you did that i got scared away from them i was going to get them initially but then i did the new screensavers with leo and he spent time with the pixel buds and it was not a pretty yeah. experience so we'll see uh <laughs> yeah so i'm curious to know what you what you think about them because i i want to get bluetooth uh, headphones to kind of you know experience that whole world now that I have uh, have the requirement to do so basically with my Pixel 2 um, but I don't think it's going to be those I'm going to have to figure yeah. something else out fair enough all right we got one more email from our buddy Marlon the guy from Trinidad one of my favorite people and he says I have two I have two Pixel 2 tips the first is you can use OKG to troubleshoot your device uh, check out this article from Android Central, uh, which he provides the link to Android Central. He says, but the cool thing is it will do a diagnostic on your phone. When I said I was having problems charging my battery, it checked things like battery health. I see a lot of potential with this feature. This is crazy, So what by is the way. So let's see here. So um, let's, let's see Let's here. drill down on this. <laughs> let me let me try. I'll see if I can. So, so the command is troubleshoot your device? Or what is the command? That's what I'm trying to yeah, figure Yeah, so it out. says, no, it says, um, why is my phone not charging? Or say, troubleshoot camera. And it'll initiate a troubleshoot session where it asks you, tr oh, troubleshooting okay. sessions where it asks you various things. So try typing camera. typing in, why is my phone not charging? Or what, I don't know what do. Some results from search. Um, oh, that, huh. that did not do it. Why, so what was the other one? Why is my what not working? Why is my phone? Why is my why phone is not my charging? Phone not charging. It's not plugged in. No. <laughs> yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be the obvious solution. Uh, anyway, turn the. Oh wait, hang off. on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At the bottom of the article, troubleshooting with the system is reported to work on Pixel Two handsets running the developer preview of Android Eight Point One. Uh, okay. All right. All right. That makes so, a lot of sense. This is the OnePlus. And it, so and, and yes, so it is limited to the Pixel Two. Got it. So if, so if you have a Pixel Two. You could try this, and you're running 8.1. Um, I'm sure this will roll out, but that's pretty cool. And Marlon oh. did say it was a Pixel 2 tip, Jason. Yeah, yeah, I, I missed that. It, I, I saw yeah. Assistant, and, I was, and my ears wow. perked up. Okay, well, so the, the second tip that he provides is that he says, if you take a picture in portrait mode, share that picture to Snapseed and use its portrait editing selection, then do further edits. When you save the picture, it will appear with the original two pictures in Google Photos, making it very easy to compare, even do more edits. Pretty handy. Oh, nice. And that's great. That, that's basically saving the original and saving an edited version. That's very, very handy. Um, and Marlon says, by the way, I love this phone, the regular Pixel 2, and I do feel it's getting a bad rap, though not by flow. Yeah, my fangirl. There you go, Flo. Um, and I had Nexus phones in the past and the OG Pixel. Love the show. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays and have a great Festivus. And you too, Marlon. Thank you, the guy from Trinidad, checking in with those Pixel 2 tips. Yes. So those of you listening, with if you have Pixel 2s and you're running 8.1, give the troubleshooting a try. Tell us uh, what your experience was like. Uh, that's a pretty cool. That's a pretty cool feature of Assistant. It's yeah. getting it's getting very cool, guys. I'm very excited about the future of Android. Can I just say that while my mother-in-law was here, who has iOS, by the way, she was asking me how she could ask Siri to help her with basic phone problems, and I realized that Siri can't. But now, after this tip, I'm realizing that Google Assistant might be the first one to actually like do it. So if, if you have a Pixel 2. Yes, okay. But I mean, just like down the line. <laughs> Yeah. For like wide use. I don't know. I'm excited. This is this is I, great. It's going to be very interesting to see Google's approach to these Pixel 2 extras and when they roll it out to everyone. Like what is, really... the what is the appropriate window to, to make right. that exclusive and when does everyone yeah. else get it? Yeah. Because this could be a great selling point for a lot of people to get like their parents and, you know, maybe people who are a little more technophobic onto Android. But just to, yeah. to have an assistant that you can ask for help. Yeah, actually, I could, use that. I could use that in life, guys. No. <laughs> I mean, it's true. We yes, we all could use a little help from my friends. <laughs> yes, we could. Um, all right, and yeah, and I mean, who knows? Maybe someday 
we'll even get some of the Bixby type features in in Google Assistant. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm if sure. they resonate with users, I'm sure they'll fold them in. Uh, Just realized I did not do the poll, so I'm going to have to do double duty oh. here. Um, All right. Well, what, do, do you want me to take it from here and then you, you do the poll? You take it from it? here. And yes, right. that would be great. So those are all of our emails. Get in on the action. You can email us and send us a video mail at AAA at twit.tv. Thank you, everyone, who did it. It's always great to hear from you. But now it is time to go to the arena. I did my best. Android Arena. All right, so last week in All About Android episode 344, we had three apps came to the arena, and the results, I must say, I'm very pleased to see. Coming in first was me with Say wow. with 40% of the votes. Nice. Very close, very close race between me and Jason with F Droid. Wow. Jason came in second with 37% of the votes, and Flo came in last with Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Nobody likes when Animal Crossing. What? It's like so much yeah. fun. So, listen, I know, I'm sorry, Flo. Uh, Animal, <laughs> Thanks. Animal Crossing, if you're a Nintendo person, that's a big fan. So, listen, listen up, folks. We're in the home stretch, by the way. I just want everyone to be clear that there are, including tonight's arena, four arenas left to go. There are oh, four no, more. This is, ooh, okay. So, really, we're down to the wire. And I'm I'm elated to tell you that it, that we already have a competitor eliminated. Oh, so we're no. we're already... We're already moving forward. So thanks to Wade County in the chat room. The results through 47 weeks of the All About Android Arena. Florence is still sitting pretty in first place with 130 points. So she's got a nice little lead. Nice. Ahead, of me, <laughs> ahead of me in second place with 125. Nice. Jason, you're in, you're in third with 116. Oh, gosh, and the really newly fun. eliminated guests with 112 points. So guests are out. Ooh. It doesn't even matter what they bring to the arena. They're playing with house money. All right. <laughs> All they could do is spoil at this point, which is which is a factor of the standing system because a guest could come in and take those five points away from a win oh, one week. So, oh, good yeah. point. So so uh, so yeah. So Flo is in first place. I'm in second. Jason's in third. After last week's results, it means that Flo goes first. Florence, take it away. Uh, well, thankfully, my friend, my pal, Jason Howell, uh, my pal. Jason Howell. Sup, sup, uh, pal. Is here. <laughs> I'm trying to make a rhyme and trying to vamp so I can open up this link. Uh, is here to help me save the day. Uh, you know what I like to be saved from? I like to be saved from the monotony of email mailing lists that I have uh, unwillingly subscribed to, but somehow they just show up. Uh, so I found unroll.me, which helps you unsubscribe from, it's basically actually, uh, it's like the Tinder of unsubscribing from emails, from bad emails, uh, because it requires that you swipe left or right to continue being on a mailing list or leaving the mailing list. Um, now I did this this afternoon. It was very quick Skype or Skyping. It was very quick, uh, going through my Gmail. And so here we have, I guess, Jason's Gmail. Is he showing us it's what sample. he is? This is actually the sample. So you're going to swipe the card to the left to unsubscribe. You're going to swipe the card to the right, uh, swipe the card up to roll up to the top of your inbox so that, you know, maybe it's a deal you want to use. You can swipe that up or swipe it to the right to keep and it'll just kind of stay where it's at in your inbox until you get to it. Um, so now Jason's going to continue <laughs> on. <laughs> I don't know what oh. junk mail I have in my mailbox. Let's see here. I found 13 subscriptions. Let's see what we found. Uh, That's all right. <laughs> air table. I don't know. What do I do? I don't know table? what that is. I don't, I, you, I don't That's remember. a spreadsheet app. That's a spreadsheet app. Okay. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Audible. So now I'll just subscribe you. Okay, okay Audible. Um, I unsubscribe from Amazon's emails, but maybe you don't want to unsubscribe from Audible. So you would just swipe to the right and that oh, or roll up and that'll, yeah, okay, you swipe to the right and that'll just stay where it is. Okay, and you'll I'm, stay I on the mailing list. Do I need <laughs> Facebook in my life? Unsubscribe. <laughs> First slide. Oh, that's our CSA. Definitely want to keep that. So I go to the right. Yes, okay. keep, keep. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't need that. Uh, guitar center. Yeah, I like to keep those because every once in a while they have good deals. And uh, yeah. oh, Kickstarter. Oh, how did that you, end up? I in feel there? like you want to keep those there because if you unsubscribe, you might miss I want, something. I want to keep those there. 
Okay. Hey, this is really cool. I like it. So what's happening when I do this? When you unsubscribe, it unsubscribes you from the email subscription. So you're never going to see those emails in your inbox ever again. When you roll up, when you swipe up, you're adding that email up to the very top of your inbox so that you can get to it immediately. Say there's like a coupon in there you want to use. Uh, and when you keep it, it's just going to it's just going to keep you on the subscription list. You're going to keep getting those emails. And this is just an app that you can keep on your phone and check in periodically. Or you can even just install it when you need to do some cleaning in your Gmail. Uh, then let it do a scan and then you can maybe go in and curate uh, what you want to keep in there, what you don't want to be subscribed to. You know, I do online shopping at weird places and I find that I get put on a lot of mailing lists I don't really want to be on. And so this is a good way to just sort of eliminate those without the headache of going through. <laughs> this video is these actors... <laughs> Are really good. <laughs> They're really, really responding to <laughs> the email in their inbox. Um, but yeah, that's unroll.me. It works with Gmail, Google Apps, Yahoo Mail, AOL, email, if you still got one of those, and Outlook.com accounts. Um, you know, it's free. It's free. Um, so you can try it out. It's free. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's free. That's for sure. Uh, take, <laughs> you might want to take a look in our chat, though. Um, the, 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 the interface here looks great, but what, 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 what's going minute. on? Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, when, when you yeah. see Steve Gibson's name in chat, you, you might, you might want to, uh, you know, it have can't a be bit, good. Have a little bit of, uh, I don't want to shoot down. Fun. This is not a arena tactic. Look at flow. Oh, this is, I just think everyone should be aware that, uh, this company got into some hot water earlier this year, uh, because they, they people found out why the I app is free. To me, unroll .me. <laughs> um, so well, yeah, it turns out, turns out they, uh, they, they sell your data. Uh, and this was discovered because Uber bought a bunch of private data from Unroll Me to get intelligence on how users use Lyft. Uh, and Unroll Me was like, "Yeah, we sell your data. The app's free. What did you expect?" So, okay. so if you All have right. privacy Knowing concerns, going in, enjoy my data. <laughs> <laughs> Unroll <laughs> me. I uh, appreciate the convenience. Now, agreed that you know uh, that. You know, it's it's not always a good thing when when your data is shared and you don't know. I'm sure there are lots of apps that we've all installed that have done that. Um, in the settings on Unroll.me, you do have an add data opt out option. Which oh, you. I think which, yeah. you saved me. So, so it's important. Yeah, thank you, Jason, because that was my question. Because this was all reported in April, and I had to imagine that between now and April they did something. So there is an opt out, which is great. So Perfect. there it is. There it is. I'm opting out yeah. right now. It opts out of targeting. But, you know, hey, everyone, uh, you, you make the decision for yourself. How do you feel yeah. about your data? Do you? Well, do you yeah. here, here's the thing Follow about it. This, this is an instance where we it was confirmed what was being done with it. Yeah. Everyone sells your data. Right. Like not everyone, but the majority of these apps, they're free for a reason because they're selling your data. That was Twitter's original revenue stream was they were selling access to the data. Yeah. So sure. it's not a big surprise. So, yeah. Well, that said, that said, I don't use this app, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty sure I know what I'll do. Uh, anyways, Ron, uh, you you're gonna wait because you won last. This happens organically. Everyone listening and watching. <laughs> by is, the way, this whole flow picks an app and Ron comes in and just pops. I should have looked through. earlier, Flo. I'm sorry. I gotta. I, I gotta be. Uh, I didn't even think to look. I guess I am. <laughs> I gotta be honest. This was not an arena tactic. I it wasn't like I was sitting here like ooh, you know, like no. I, this is more. I'm looking out for the users. I was sure <laughs> you were gonna point to the the list and say actually. <laughs> Oh. This was done. No. Hey, Sorry. I control left. <laughs> All right. So that's unroll.me if you do or do not you want to install it. opt out of your data before you have it do anything. <laughs> it's a good, good idea okay. to opt do out. Do that settings. Yes. And uh, yeah. And uh, as Del Poco in the chat says, chat room can take the blame. Okay. Uh, All right. For that. All right. So I have an app that as far as I know is... 
as far as I know, that's as good as much of an assurance as anyone can give you on apps these days, uh, is not selling your data. This app actually, I, I can't remember where I read about this a couple of weeks ago, but when I read about it, it actually kind of spoke to me on a certain level because I've always wanted to interview my parents. I've always wanted to sit down with an, you know, with an audio recording with my dad and ask him about certain aspects of his life. He was in the Vietnam War. He has a very, you know, very thick history before, before even I knew him. And I would love to be able to capture that and be able to, I don't know, have that to, to hand down to my kids to, to be, you know, so that they can learn a little bit more about my dad. Cause admittedly I have a really bad memory about details and I don't want to lose that stuff. So this is an app called StoryCore. And basically what it is, is it's an app that allows you to do a couple of things. You can, um, you can interview. So if I was to set up an interview here, I could start it off, prepare for an interview. Uh, who am I going to talk to? I'm going to talk to you know, my dad. And it allows you, it assists you in what questions you might want to ask if you need assistance uh, with that, you can kind of go through and find some really interesting, insightful questions. You know, these are some of the best questions and you can add them to the list. Um, it also has a little section for like warm up questions, how to get the ball rolling, really kind of targeting people who maybe haven't done an interview before, haven't interviewed somebody before. Um, the great listen, parents, grandparents, all types of different questions to get you started to um, to come armed to this interview with some really good topics to kind of dive in and uh, and ask whoever you happen to be interviewing. Um, who will you interview? Obviously, put in a little bit of information about them. They'll go ahead and get that information. Then you jump into it. And once you jump into it, you get all the questions that are being asked. Um, I can go ahead and start it. Sorry. I'll give it a permission. It starts to record. We do our interview. As I'm going through, I've got the questions that are that are listed here. When I'm done, I just check it off. And it gives you, you know, this just little interface here to kind of, you know, keep you on task, keep you on target for your interview. Once you're all done, I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. Uh, you can take a photo. So maybe it's a photo of you too, or maybe it's a photo of the person that you're interviewing. Uh, or you can upload that. I'll go ahead and skip that right now. And then this allows it to um, be posted to StoryCorps for others to to uh, listen to and learn a little something about. I'm going to cancel out of that. You can you know tag it up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll go into browse here, and you can see on the main landing page just some of the featured interviews once it loads up here and. Yeah, it's just kind of a, you know, if, if you're ever looking for interesting things to listen to, this is a way to really kind of dive in and, and learn about just very random selections of people around the world. Like uh, this is, uh, nobody tells you what to expect after getting shot, this this interview right here. And you can go in there, it loads it up, it's a three minute and four second. Two decades ago. It was a summer day in Los Angeles, and six-year-old Josh Stepakoff... Was and it's obviously, it's an interview. They kind of set it up. Ah, stop. Stop. I need you to pause. Oh, the pause is down there. Sorry. That was my bad. Um, and you can add... So it has kind of social features. So if there are people in here and you want to follow more of their stories, more of their interviews, you can add them. Uh, just a really cool, different app and I'm like I'm super inspired by this. The next time I visit my parents, I really want to sit down with this and interview my parents and get some things recorded that I can hold on to. And I, I think it would just be a really rewarding experience and uh I don't know. I, I like this I like everything behind StoryCorps. StoryCorps StoryCorps is awesome. They have I'm glad to see that they they expanded out to an app because they actually have here in New York City these little booths that are set up. There's one way downtown, um, kind of by City Hall and everything in Manhattan, uh, where you can just go in and tell your story and they collect all people's stories and then they release the best ones at the end of the week. And it's this whole kind of innovative, you know, kind of embracing community and the stories that everyday people have. Um, so I'm glad to see that they've moved from just kind of a physical kind of uh, location kind of base with those booths into an app. I think that's super cool. Yeah. I like it a lot. Um, so, you know, uh, learn learn about some people you may not know and people who aren't necessarily going to be 
written about online. You know what I mean? These are these are actual stories by actual people that are outside of kind of the mainstream kind of media storytelling universe. Uh, it's called StoryCorps, and uh, it's free. So you can interview, or you can listen, or you can do both. And there you go. Uh, all right, Ron, it is your turn. I have your app installed. Great. It's been a while, folks, since I've done a uh, a crazy app. So here we go. It's almost the end of the year. Let's have some fun. Uh, Retro Browser Time Machine. Uh, it's free in the Google Play Store. And uh, Jason, if you want to boot it up, it is a browser that searches, uh, that gives you how web pages looked per a certain date and oh time. Oh, my God. And it taps into the Wayback Machine as well as to some other archive, internet archive stuff, um, but is full of fun little little surprises. So if you look here on that main page, you're looking at Google on how Google looked, I believe, on the date is 2005, right? So what you can do is uh, you can just go into the, the search bar, and when you tap into the search bar, um, not the search bar, I'm sorry, the URL bar above where it says google.com. So what it will do is it will show you the date that it's searching close to, so December 28, <laughs> 2005. And it will also show you the pages that were popular that day if you want to see other things. But we could change the date. Let's change the date there, Jason. Let's so hit change. And then you pulls up the calendar. And so let's just let's just go like let's just go like f forward in time to 20 to 2008, let's just say. Okay. Okay. Any day in 2008. All right. February All right. 1st. And let's let's take a look at twit.tv. Let's see what twit.tv looked like. Okay, so do I just go up here? Now, you, now just go up there and, and type in the... Yeah, so you can just delete all that. It just works like any other browser. Twit.tv. So, so now it might not find the exact date you entered, but it will find the date closest to it, right? Okay, it's and, loading. And there it is. And so now the thing is with some of these things, it's it's dealing with cached versions. Yeah. So quite often you run into situations where CSS wasn't saved or things like this. So you're going to see wonky stuff. But this is what was going on in 2008 on Twit, which is pretty cool. Um, right? <laughs> um, that's pretty neat, right? Jumping Monkeys um, was a show net at night. Yeah. yeah. Munchcast. So. Good times. Wow. Um, I so on, what else can I uh, search? Now what's neat, so you can do all the searching, but this is where it gets crazier. Hit the settings icon in the upper left-hand corner, Jason. So unfortunately, this um, this this app is app this uh, app is ad supported. So there's no way to donate to turn off the ads. So you can see down at the bottom, are they cheating it's in front of her? High that, quality. That's, an, that's ad. an ad. So ignore that. <laughs> but here you can set the home page for when you open it up to whatever page you want it to open to. But if you tap theme, you can switch from default to the Win95 theme. Here we and go. And now hit hit save changes. Oh, save you gotta save the changes. Okay. You're gonna see an ad. Unfortunately, sorry about that. <laughs> and so now, if you notice, the Chrome of the browser has changed to a Windows 95 Internet Explorer browser, which I feel like that just takes the cake. There you go. <laughs> so, um, so go into the browser bar and let's let's change let's change the URL. Let's change the date again. Let's go let's go to um, uh, let's go back to 2002. Oh, what do you say? Let's yeah. go way back. All right, so right? let's go 2002. Let's go to StarWars.com. Oh gosh. Okay, give me a second. Star Wars dot com. No idea if it was I'm, I'm thinking this is a Ooh. big media site. I think like, I remember what it used to look like. Um it's it was loading Let's in my see. Windows ninety five. And there it is. Wow. Prequel glory, Star Wars. <laughs> News. Hayden and Nat in the MTV movie house. <laughs> so pretty much if any website was saved at any point and at least in the Wayback Machine, I don't know what other services. When when I looked into this app, they said they use other caching services over the years. Wayback Machine is the one that we all know about we played with before, and this is essentially just another way to integrate with the uh, with the Wayback Machine. Um, but uh, they might be tapping into some other th uh, services. This is not hosted by Star Wars. This is a cached version. So again, you might run into some weirdness. But if you want to revisit what the web looked like before, oh, I don't know, things we oh, take for granted like JavaScript and Ajax and like and 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 and, and, and all other sorts of web technologies, uh, you can see when when rollovers were a big deal. Um, if nice. you hit the drop down menu, you can see what else was popular in 2002. My Excite start page, Lycos. Lycos. <laughs> so I think I remember Lycos just a little bit. Oh man, yep. 
this was yep this is the way the web looked fun times fun times so if you want to revisit if you want to revisit the web you can go to retro browser time machine and you can make it look like it's from the 90s and you can go look at the internet from the 90s as well too so there it is I guess if i'm on a windows 95 i should go to aol yeah just see what's going on there yeah i just want to hop into aol and that doesn't look like much Kill some time, yeah. Apparently, I'm done. Welcome to AOL Anywhere. Oh well. So. <laughs> oh well, uh, that's awesome. It's called Retro Browser Time Machine. Yep. Love Fun it. Stuff. That's great. I wish they gave an option for removing the ad. That would make it even better. Yeah, I hope. I wish they would because I also want to support our devs. I want to yep. throw them money. That's pretty cool. Yep. So. Yep. Awesome stuff. Uh, so that's fantastic. Let's see here. So we do have a poll. And uh, we're getting a lot of votes on the polls now, so I'm loving it. I'm loving the direction. Twit.to slash triple A poll 345. Twit.to slash AAA poll 345 for episode 345. Place your vote for either Unroll.me, StoryCorps, or Retro Browser. You can place your vote, and we'll check in on it next week. Victor, where does your vote lie? Yeah, Victor, my man. Yeah. Retro All Browser. Right. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to go back to a year when, like, all our sports teams were good. So oh. I don't um, see what yeah. the articles were in those those days. So <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> you can remember what it was like to read read sports articles from 2002. Yeah, 2002, 2003, all of them were good at the at that year. Okay, right? so okay. <laughs> it's outside of my scope. <laughs> right on, great great pick. Um, and I think that's it. We've done it. That's it. We've Put done it. In it. The last ever episode of today's episode of All About Android. I was about <laughs> to say, geez. Yeah, no. We've got plenty more in queue. Um, we've, got, we've got three more arenas left in the year, guys. This is like, it's real. I'm going to bring it. I'm, uh, it's real. It. And like, also, we, we wondered if the sta if the point system would work. I don't want to oh, pat yeah. myself on the back, but I think here we are. We are a great all idea. We're all in it. We're all in it. And the guests can be spoilers. I love it. It's great. Yeah, yeah I love it too. Um, although I'm realizing I'm so far at the bottom at this point, like I could be edged out. Uh, I, I don't know mathematically if that means I could be edged out next week, but it's entirely possible. We need to get some statisticians, statistics people, statisticians, to do to do the different scenarios where, like, if flow comes in, for, if like, if it's one, two, three, three, two, one, like, we have the, you know, we can figure that out. Yes. And uh, and I know Wade is going to be right on top of it, and he will let you know if you uh, Wade County in the chat room. He will uh, tell you if you've been eliminated, unfortunately, next week. So I hope not, Jason. I want you because I I don't want to compete with flow. I mean, anybody could have made that mistake tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Thanks, right? Rob. <laughs> but you never know. Hey, it Thanks, could still win. Room. <laughs> uh, and that, as they say, is that flow. What's up in your world? What's going on? Uh, God, there's so much stuff going on. Um, just follow me at oh that flow on Twitter for right now. Best way to keep up with me, and on Snapchat and Instagram. Radical. Also, oh that flow. Oh, that flow. Everywhere. Can I say oh, that flow? Oh, oh that, that flow. flow everywhere. Everything is oh, that flow. All right. Good to know. What about you, Ron? Oh, that flow. Same thing. I'm just trying to keep up and get to the holidays. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at RonXO. That's where my fun stuff is. You can go see my Christmas tree. There you go. Do it. See the <laughs> Christmas tree. And, That's how uh, I knew about it already. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and, and be jealous of the Christmas tree. Uh, Victor, thank you so much. Appreciate everything tonight. All your help. Oh, no problem. And all the, the clicking of buttons and the occasional microphone sway um, <laughs> uh, so that you can talk into it. Appreciate it. Um, you can find me at yellowgoldmusic.com, jasonhowell.net. Kickstarter is totally underway. We're about 50% funded, so I'm crossing my fingers. We've, oh, hey, we, we breached halfway in, in awesome. the last couple hours, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, I feel very positive at that, that we can pull this off. So we shall see. And even if even if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. Let's but do this. Let's see if we can make it happen. Yellowgoldmusic.com slash Kickstarter. If you want to pitch in on new album, hey, I wouldn't stop you. I'd welcome it. And I would love to have you along for the ride. Uh, but that is for this show. That is it for this week. We have no more show to give until next week. Uh, leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us an email, AAA at twit.tv. Uh, find us on Twitter. We are at Android Show. 
We have a subreddit, twitaaa.reddit.com. You can always post show, uh, stories there. That'll help us when we're putting the show together. Vote them up, vote them down. Kyle D is moderating that, and he does a fantastic job. Uh, all apps from every episode can be found at twit.to slash Android apps. So if you're ever uh, wondering what we talked about when, go there. You can find them. And show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA. you also find our episodes everywhere you find fine podcasts. And finally, catch us live every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everyone. I want those Oreos.